Hello, Mr. Nygren here. Welcome back to the Naga and Blood Elven hot seat campaign where I play both factions at once. Alright, so it's the Frozen Throne campaign, the late campaign. And we are at turn 35, the same turn that I were at in, in the previous episode. So I last played this campaign in November 2021. Unfortunately, because I updated them more, they had to restart everything from scratch. I have replayed everything without recording um, to the point where I were at. But the problem is that we, I believe in the, in the last update from the summer of 2022, that the Blood Elven armies were nerfed, so they are no longer as overpowered as they were previously. In the previous version they had a lot of elite troops from the start and such, but now they have basic and medium troops and only like one or two infantry elite troops so they are very weaker which means that they had to abandon Nordrend we started in this area Uldar, we had to abandon it we have left Nordrend the blood elves are no longer there however I believe that our ally the Naga still started in Nordrend and uh, they given us this area but we didn't get any troops so end of turn report Skirch is the has the overall strongest military in the world and is the overall strongest faction. They also have the largest population of undead skeletons and such. The the night elves have the best production in the world and the burning legion has the best financial situation. Okay, so we got some areas from the blood uh, from the Naga in exchange for money. I am playing both factions. I believe the Naga have also abandoned Kalimdor just like they did in the previous. Uh, episode, episodes, uh, and uh, but they didn't go to Northrend. They have a few areas in Northrend still, but they are very weak. Instead, they have uh, moved all their troops uh, by using their Kraken fleet, and they have actually invaded this area, Suldasar, the capital of the Sandlari minor faction. They have a huge army there, and. Uh, actually fought this battle in, on the next turn so we will fight it again we had saved the game prior to doing uh, clicking this next, next turn because it, uh, we ended the previous episode on turn 25 so we wanted to start at the same turn but they also fought this battle without recording uh, back in, on november 8 i believe 2022 and and it was a huge battle but um, it was difficult we had a lot of losses and such and i saved after the battle so i could have started after the battle too on turn 36 but i decided to start here so we can fight it again and record so sildasar is the capital of the sandalari trolls they are a minor faction in this version of the mod they might become their own faction in a later version and they have three unique troll units but the idea is that they can also get other troll units from other factions as part of their own i'm not sure they will get everyone but they will get a few from from the other trolls, from all the other trolls, um, certainly the better troops, maybe not all the basic ones. Uh, okay, and um, this area is a citadel, the highest level of castle, so they will be able to get elite troops from there and such. It's a good position to start from, you know, they had a bunch of areas in Kalimdor that will easily fall to the night elves and horde and others, and they have a good uh, capital here, Eldaret, but it's also under threat from many factions and in Northrend we have the Scourge and Rykel, the Dakari and the Astral and Rube faction, they are all threatening the Naga, even the Skull Crusade and the Trade Coalition. <coughs> so I decided it was too difficult to hold these areas and instead uh, I decided because they are not um, the final settle settlement levels, we don't, do not have access to the best troops. Uh, but Eldaret had had uh, like uh, almost final level of settlement, like the the second latest, the one just before the final. So we could get really good troops from there. But if we take Suldasar, we'll be able to get everything. But we need to build the right buildings too, of course. Okay, and we are on the Blood Elven turn. See the Sindore is their name in their own language, the Blood Elves. They are former High Elves that changed their name of their Artes, um, uh, Prince Artes, or Death Knight Artes. The Scourge killed most of their population. The capital city is Silver Moon. 
<coughs> Prince Keltas, Sunstrider, is their leader. He is no longer king, because he was prince in the lore. So he is a prince again, uh, and the greatest general is also Prince Keltas, Sunstrider. Generals, we have three, no, we have four generals, and regions controlled eleven. We have four cities and seven castles. Battles won, nineteen during this campaign. Battles lost, zero. The year is 25, uh, I believe, and turn number is 35. To win, we need domination, hold 50 regions. We need to conquer 50 regions in order to win, and we have 11 now. So we need <coughs> we need 49 more regions in order to win. No, I'm sorry. We, we need uh, we need 50. We have 11. We need we need 39 more regions. I believe. Yeah, 39 more regions, and including Tranquillian, which we have reconquered this area. We took it from the Scourge. <coughs> the 100. And the uh, Silver Moon, our capital, we have, I believe we started with it. And the Sunwell, we also started with that one. And Fairbreeze, we reconquered it from the Scourge. <coughs> and. Uh, Sun, Sail, and Shorage, we conquer it from the Scourge. And we need to eliminate factions, the Lions of Lordaeron, because they betrayed us and almost killed off the faction leader. They are an enemy, led by, I believe, Marshal Garethos of Lordaeron. And we also need to eliminate the Scourge, the Undead, our main enemy, and the Amani Trolls, another enemy of ours. We have conquered Torvata from the Amani Trolls. We have reconquered everything here. We are laying siege to Sulmashar, this Amani Troll area, just like in the previous episode. So we created that setting. The Amani are still in control of their capital, Sulaman. We spawn garrisons if we attack it, so we need to have at least two armies if we besiege it. We have taken Koren's Crossing as the Blood Elves. <coughs> Which we didn't do in the previous version or episode. So uh, that's a difference, but we only have a unit of Elven Initiates there. I believe I gave back this area to the <coughs> to the Scarlet Crusade. They are an ally, an AI controlled ally. We also have our Naga ally here, they sent an entire army of Murlocs. So they, I believe they had an entire army of Murlocs in this area. No, they started with a general that was a Murloc and like five or six units and we had other areas with Murlocs and I combined them into one huge Murloc army. And then I sent the army here to aid the Blood Elves and they've been in a few battles. And only this force remains, but the general is still alive, Krellian. It's like the worst army in, in the Blood Elf, uh, in the Naga army. But they still an allied army. So I had given Corin's Crossing to the Scarlet Crusade because I loaded the earlier save. They do not have it, and we have it still. So I think we will find out where we have placed the diplomat. We have an assassin here, blood trade assassin, and the blood elven archer spy. I don't know where the... here is the diplomat. We need to wait one turn. See. And we can um, attack here, I believe. Attack Sulmashar. Could attack now, actually. We have the Naga fleet here. Giant <laughs> dragon turtles. The Kraken Moodle. We have the Blood Elven fleet too. Joining our fleet, orders. An army, two units. Well, can disembark those units there. Combining the fleets. And uh, can attack the Amani port. Right, we have two elite units here. I do not really need them before we fight this battle. So I haven't fought this battle in 
in, in the previous episode. I believe I we are laying siege with Verisa. Could probably do this battle. Diplomacy, we are allied to the Skull Crusade temporarily. They will probably become an enemy sooner or later. We are allied to the Naga too. Which we will remain an ally to. And then we have enemies, Lord of Arms, Scourge, and the Amani Trolls, and the Minor Faction Rebels. Okay. Uh, we have Verisa here with an army. She also have a few highwaymen. They lack a unit info card, one of the few units that lack them. I believe a few minor faction units or rebel units lack unit info card still. And I have the archers, Elven Silver Guards, Elven Swordsmen, Silver Guard Lancers, Blood Knights, and the Elven Initiates and the Spellbreakers. I would say this is basic medium army. Sending reinforcements to her army. Do not really need reinforcements to win against this, these two units, unless they have the garrison script there. They might want to combine their troops, if that's the case. Here we have a huge army under faction Al region lord, Lord Martyron. He has his own battle model that looks exactly like the strat model now. This guy. Blood Knight, the Blood Elves, and we have the leader, Prince Kaltas Sunstrider, inside of Silver Moon, the capital. And I believe Lothar Martyron also has a like basic medium. Now he, you know, he has like a medium to elite army, mostly medium troops, and Kaltas has an elite and medium army, mostly elite troops, and. Um, they are not really elite, they are more like really good medium troops or early elite troops. They are not the best troops, but really good. And this arm is the weakest one. I don't know, they might get additional troops if we attack. I think we should attack most likely. Yeah, uh, they didn't get any additional troops, good. I mean, it's champion's bodyguard. Their elite infantry unit, and then we have the Amanish Berserkers. They are like axe throwers, really good axe throwing unit. And then we have the Amanish Warmongers, all of them are elite. We have a 20 to 3 advantage. Uh, we could attack and take the area. They kind of wanted the Murlocs to join in that battle. Scourge is still holding strat home under General Baron Riven there. We have a huge Skull Crusade army here. I believe that Naga are allied to us and the Burning Legion. They are not allied to the Skull Crusade. They might be attacked by the Skull Crusade. That's a problem. Could have probably moved this arm here. Uh, I think we might want to attack this area. After all, we'll fight the battle on the battle map. Originally, I wanted to waste the Murloc troops, but it doesn't matter. Trying to attack, I believe uh, Soldazar. Just when I last played that battle, I will be more careful this time. I lost way more than I had to because the the mages of the Sol of the Sandlari trolls can fire their beams through the walls and buildings. So it was actually difficult. Here we have an Aztec style region, a green one. The Amani trolls, no walls. Troops, the Elven Swordsmen, the Militia, the Elven Initiates, walk around, the civilian animation, we have the Silver Guard Lancers Cavalry, pretty cool cavalry unit, they have like Warhammer horses that are skinned. Okay, we have the Elven Rangers, the Blood Elves. 
archers. Then we have some human militia. Uh, I mean, human mercenaries. Uh, highwaymen, bandits. We have mercenaries in the area of the humans. Anyone that has a general in the area. We have the blood knights, we also have very skinned Warhammer horses, they look pretty cool. So Bant, the main model, modeler, he did a lot of units and mounts and such, but he didn't bother to do the Warcraft horses, so he did the, instead we went for the Warhammer horses and reskinned them. But the blood elves still have the, the Hawkstrider knights and the Dragonhawk knights, so they have two Warcraft mounts, and then they have the, the, the actual horses that are not Warcraft mounts, but still look kind of similar. Because Warhammer and Warcraft is very similar. Warcraft was originally supposed to be a Warhammer game. It became its own thing because they lost the license for Warhammer. And then they changed it into Warcraft. And then it became a success. So uh, Give a Workshop, the company behind Warhammer Fantasy Day, probably weren't very happy. And Warcraft became a success because it was supposed to be a Warhammer game. Origin. Uh, they just changed uh, the name from Warhammer to Warcraft and changed some stuff. So it has many of the same races like High Elves, Orcs, Humans and such, but things were changed in terms of lore and story and, and, and details. So it's not the same anymore, but, but Warcraft was an offshoot of uh, Warhammer. The only reason it didn't become a Warhammer game in the 90s was because the, the company behind Warhammer removed the license from the company that made uh, Warcraft. And then Warcraft actually became a success anyway. <laughs> so Anyway, uh, we will select the general and pause the game. Alright, we're back. We are controlling the general with Risa Vindra and unfortunately she is a little bit tall because the main general for the Blood Elves and High Elves is the, uh, I believe, uh, Keldore or something, uh, Swordmasters and they are very very tall so any general with that animation will be as tall, that's why she has her feet a little bit in the air, which is a frame. Still looks decent. The, the animation is for a taller unit, that's why she looks a little bit uh, odd as compared to the normal rangers here that have their feet on the ground. You can see that the Risa is slightly in the air and taller than the others. It's because their generic general has a taller animation. These are the elven rangers. So the Risa is the sister of Sylvanas Vindrunner, who was a general of the High Elven Army. Risa is also one of the generals of the High Elven or Kveltalas army. Here they have become the Blood Elves and now she is a general of the Blood Elves while her sister Sylvanas Windrunner has been killed by Artus the Scourge and respawned as an undead in Artus' army and then she managed to break free together with the Forsaken. So she is the leader of the Forsaken in this campaign and is outside of Lordaeron or is holding Lordaeron. So she is also in the campaign, but she is not a part of this faction anymore. She has the same model, just an undead verse. Okay. In the Reign of Chaos campaign she is a high elf, and in this campaign she is an undead. And Verisa is still high elf here. She is unchanged, but I believe in the high elven army um, that these uh, elven rangers would be blue and, and uh, white instead of red. Okay, we will start the game. And of course, we want to waste the bandits first. We'll attack their ranged units, the, bers the money berserkers that throw axes. We could also send in our ranged units. Have no problem with that. Got one unit will also attack. Ah, the 
Hellen Rangers is the bodyguard of Risa. He won't use them. Can waste eleven initiates and the foot soldiers. The eleven swordsmen, I mean. Send in those three together with the spell breakers. Don't use our unit. We can lose formation with them. Because if we fire with this unit, then the camera, the immersion mode, the third person mode will zoom in on the actual projectile, and we don't want that. This is the Blood Elven army. I always wanted to place the Blood Elves and the uh, Naga in, in Warcraft 3 and Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne back in the day. So that's one of the reasons why I want to play them in this mod. I always wanted to play a campaign with them. They didn't have a campaign, they were only... Uh, no, they were in the campaign, but they were not in custom battle. Couldn't really place them outside of the campaign. Okay, we will zoom out and enable... What the fuck, this shouldn't happen when... Um, this shouldn't happen normally when and I'm out zoom, but it didn't crash because I zoomed out, so that's fine. If I'm zoomed in and click uh, and then that happens, then unfortunately the game will crash. Unfortunately, the the Riva 2 Total War and Yanora project tool that World of uh, Total War is using is. Um, <coughs> it's using the same button for that feature there for the hot seat and if I'm zoomed in like this when that shows up the game will crash so I, that's why I need to zoom out every time I switch between walking and running because I'm using the tool Teresa is pretty fast she looks glitched when she walks because she is using the wrong animation of the sword masters here that's where she looks kind of glitched when she runs. Praise the saints! Our men have taken control of the city. Okay. Our infantry are already fighting here. Let's put normal speed on. The ranged units are firing. Our men no longer command the city. My lord, our men have taken control of the city. How many have we killed? We killed 23%, lost 2%. It is unwise to praise the day before sunset. Let's see ah, things from the point of view the of Elven Swordsman here. Didn't use real wall formation because usually that's good against range units. They protect better against missiles, but they are worse in actual melee fighting. That's why we do not use it. Sometimes they can knock back the enemy if they have reload. Uh, could be good, as we saw with the goblins in the previous episode where I fought with the goblins against the frag trolls. We had the heavy goblin infantry used reload formation and pushed the troll warriors and others, the frag zealots, forward in front of them. The trolls had elite units here, but very few, only three units. If we remain true and wholehearted, victory will be ours. Sucks that the animation isn't perfect for Verisa. That's the case for all the generals of the elves, if they are not sword masters. Problem is that the, the generic general, the, the, the animation for the generic general is shared with all the generals. That's why any unit that he said doesn't have the same animation will get screwed. We can't use the animation of any ranged unit because that would cause a crash in melee. Unless the bodyguard is a ranged unit. So this will have to do. lot of 
troops in front of us. Trying to get to the action. Now we can see the enemy. This Varisa Windrunner and the Elven Rangers, they were fan-made models. The uh, Elven swords, uh, Swordsmen, they are like a mix between Warhammer and Warcraft, I believe. Fan-made. The shit, they slaughter the Swordsmen, they are not very good against the elite troops. Ah, uh, they have Berserkers. It's supposed to game. Who is, what is that unit? Warmongers. So that's their version of Berserkers. They are really good. Can go Berserk. Do not want our range units to... Be that close to the enemy. Right, um, our other units. Don't think we need the uh, humans to be that close either. They are ranged units. Let's move them out of there. Okay, and then swordsman. Continue to fight, we only have one left there. 41 spellbreakers. They will attack. Seem to be losing a lot of men. We have 65 swordsmen here, but they are blinking. Which tells me they are dying. With 8 initiates, they will also charge. Then we have two elven swordsmen. They also charge. All the infantry should charge. Uh, I don't want to use the other troops there. Okay, let's unpause the game. Didn't go too well over there. They slaughtered our troops with those berserkers. They yeah, are the heroic. Uh, ability of the berserkers and they go berserk they are heroic which makes them really really strong okay we need to move around the enemy are so we don't get they have lost half their men Champions over there. Maybe we can run around this way. Don't know if they will defeat our infantry or not. They are not that many, but they are very strong. Especially those warmongers with the berserk ability. They weren't as strong previously in earlier versions of the mod when they weren't berserkers. Now when they have the berserk ability, they are really, really good. The player loses control over them when they go berserk. That's the only setback. They wanted each dead. troll unit to we have such a to unit. Yeah, they sent their warmongers there. They needed to run further away. Our archers are smart enough to run away when they get close, which is very good. The human highwaymen are here too. Send the one with the general. 
Enemy on a fallen captain to Kine, but it's just a captain, okay. Good job, archers continue to fire. This is just a village of their money, but still won't take it. It's deep hatred between the trolls and the elves since long ago. And the elves took areas from the trolls and destroyed, helped in destroying their empire. And the trolls, they celebrated when the scourge killed off the high elves and made undead out of most of them. Blood elves want revenge on the scourge and they also have bad blood with the Amani. As for Lordaeron, I believe they were allies and they were high elves. And they started as allies when they had uh, become the blood elves, but they were betrayed by Marshal Garethos, leader of Lordaeron, because the king of Lordaeron is dead. King Terinus was killed by Prince Artus, the heir, who is now a death knight in the scourge. What the fuck? I don't want this in it. Okay. The battle is in our favor. If we remain true and wholehearted, victory will be ours. All right. So we have three enemies in Eastern Kingdoms, and we are not going to Northern before we have a better army. The Naga they want to take Sildasar, capital of the Sandalari Trolls, to get a strong point. So uh, the final level of settlement, they, they can build up their troops and get real good troops from there. And uh, there is no chance that the enemy will ever attack it because it's an ire. It's better to have that as the base of operations instead of having an area on water and the old Kalimdor that will easily be attacked. Maybe the Naga and the Bloodhouse can combine their troops like they did in the other episode. The we won! Would you have soldiers? Seems they are defeated. Clear victory. Risa Windrunner had 850 blood elves. Lost 895. No, 695. And 1163 remaining after battle. Enemies killed 127. Captain Fukine of the Mani Troll. Tukine of the Mani Trolls had 127 trolls. Lost all of them, zero remaining. They killed 807 of our troops. Lost a lot of troops. We'll probably restore a few. As far as I can see, we have lost all the infantry. We lost at least three units of elven swordsmen. Which is medium infantry, and they are basic infantry of the elves, but certainly better than most medium infantry in the game. And then the volunteers, militia, they cannot stand in line, but they are still stat-wise better than most other infantry in the game, I mean militia in the game, and then we had a spellbreaker unit which is actually a medium infantry unit that is pretty good, better than the swordsmen and the initiates, we lost all of them to the berserkers and others, the infantry was killed off by the trolls, we could still kill off the trolls with the help of our archers. Okay, and the stat sticks. And the archers did well. Alright. And the battle. In this mod, it doesn't crash off the bat, so I don't know. We click and turn at least. See what happens. We can just walk in, we can. Bang a few heads and we can let them have it. We will let them have it so they won't revolt. Took still the sad little Amani village there. And we have this large city of the Scourge, Stratholm, that we want to take. We also want to take their capital, the Amani capital. Salaman, but they will spawn a huge army if we send an army there. We need at least two armies, maybe three, to take it, because they will have one huge army defending. Here we have Stromgard armies. This is the Frozen Throne campaign, so they started with, I believe, this area, Durnhold, and some more areas than in the other campaign, but 
They will conquer this area from the scourge, I'm pretty sure. And this area, South Shore. They either started with it or conquered it. Maybe they started with this one. We have a female general here, Amran of Erator, and she actually has a female model in battle. There are no female soldiers of the humans except the militia, but uh, the, the generals, the female generals of Stromgard, Amran and Niels of Stromgard, they have female models that are unique. I may make actual heavy infantry out of those models, we'll say. Resistance is futile, still Mashar. My army rats, Rita, Rita Vainrunner. Okay. Yeah, we got a few areas from the Naga. We want to recruit troops there as soon as possible. So they won't become rebel. Alright. So the Naga gave away pretty much all their areas on the Ayers. And in Northrend, so the Blood Elves accept this area. Okay, which is the capital, until they get Zeldazar, which is better positioned to be the capital. The only problem with it is that it looks like a troll capital, because it's the final level of settlement. You can't change it when it's the final one. If it's something lower, you can upgrade it and it will become your own type of settlement. But if it starts as a final settlement, you can't upgrade it, so you can't change it. It will always be a troll settlement. Okay, let's end the turn. Okay, the Blood Elves says, their offers we will give tribute of 8,000 florins per turn. Thing is that the, the Naga are broke in the campaign, while the Blood Elves are rich, so the Blood Elves want to give the Naga 8,000 florins per turn for 20 turns and map information and the demands are map information and attack the scourge in the manufacturing will accept so that the Naga no longer uh, what should I say? fucking shit is this some, some bullshit with that text there the way there is like an issue not in the game, but with, with my desktop. They end up clicking on us something. Uh, I'm not sure if it's visible. Ah, the Blood Elves did recruit a unit here, but the area revolted. So now they need to take it together with the Naga here. Okay. We'll aid in the battle. We have a unit of Malok Shore Crawlers here. They have a unit of 11 Initiates. Two units versus three. Shit, they have the Golok Oracles. That's a mage unit. Then they will probably win. A Knight Elven Fleet here. Oh, they have any troops. We lost the capital to the minor factions, we left it undefended and it revolted. We have fort here, the Night Elves have taken this area and all the other areas, they have not taken the fort. Gave away the Ayers to the Blood Elves. Gave this area to the Blood Elves too, they have an Elven Initiate there, now we can move them. Murlocs, Swamp Runners, we we'll just disband them, they are too far away from anyone to be of any use, I'm not gonna send a fleet there to get the Murloc unit, we have a Diplomat here, the Naga, the old general, we suspect you will waste our time, you had best not, map information might be good, We'll try. No, they didn't accept. Okay. Okay. I'm worried that the video has been interrupted into more than one part. We 
because of that issue with it's like when I started a computer sometimes there is a, an, an issue where it says uh, network uh, something in the lower right corner and when I click there I tab out so I'm worried that they have started created more than one video now many small videos because of that issue I don't think we'll play another battle in this episode. The word we have more than one episode. Okay. Might need to restart the computer. Because the that thing is in the same area as when you select, for example, when you have the diplomacy on and you select to end the diplomacy click on a certain button and it's located at the exact same spot. Is it very annoying? This might result in a tab out when you are about to select when you select uh, to end the diplomacy in the exit the diplomacy. Okay, so we have a uh, Naga spy here. You can see Nasha the Night of General there. We have a Naga Merchant, Sea Witch Merchant, and Satyr Spy. The, this arm here. So we want to fight somebody. We'll besiege Scourge. And Riven there, the others. So the Naga capital city is Ripler Strand for now. It will be changed to Sildasar. Faction leader is Lord Ildan Stormrage. Greatest general is the same guy. Generals, we have 12 generals of the Naga. Regions controlled one. We have one city, Ripler Strand, the capital. And we have zero castles. We gave away all the other areas. All uh, battles won because they were revolting and such. We had no money. See, we have no money at all. Uh, battles won 3, battles lost 2. We haven't done a lot in this campaign. The, the Naga actually became bankrupt. Uh, despite being well in the previous campaign. And, that, and that's because, or uh, well in the earlier episodes, when I played the older version of the game, the mod. And the reason is because uh, I lowered each faction's economy in the new version. And while well, it became better for the Blood Elves and many of the others, it became worse for the Naga. They can't handle it, so they get bankrupt, so they shouldn't have gotten lower uh, resources, they should have kept uh, how they were previously. They were actually very well uh, balanced economically in, in the previous version, but now they go bankrupt, so they need the help from Blood Elves, from the Blood Elves to, to get their money back up. Okay, uh, to win we need 50 regions, we hold one currently, we need 49 to win. Uh, 49 additional regions, and we need to eliminate factions alliance Florida on the Night Elves and the Scourge. So the Naga need to eliminate the Night Elves too. We are at war with many factions, including and we are allied to the Burning Legion. They are only uh, uh, present in Kalimdor. And we have the Blood Elves as an ally too. We are at war with many. Lorda on Terramore, the Night Elves, the Scourge, the Amani Trolls, and Karai Insects, Rekul. Forsaken and the rebels. Uh, so, and we have moved the troops here. The old armies here. Ready to invade. We have Lady Vash here. Together with Nagentus and Rurgas, the sea guy and general. We have Illidan Stormridge and four, four other generals here. Vija, Warlord Kalitrash, Lord Sinslayer and uh, General Skechers. Skash I believe all of them are custom generals um, from Warcraft lore except Skechers. And the uh, same here. They are known generals. This one is not no, uh, Kalitres Tidrat. I think that's not a known one. Then we have Warlord Swistis. It's a known general. And we have uh, Atop the Blood Cursed. He's a known general too. And Illidan has his own model, same with Lady Vash. She doesn't have her armor. So they're required 
revert to model. Okay, we will um, start the battle here. So the Sandrali trolls look weak because they have been under siege for a long time. Only one turn until surrender. Click end turn, they will probably sally out. I didn't like it that they sallied out previously. They killed a lot of our troops, I believe. I think we will attack. But we will end the episode here, I think. So see ya in the next episode. Because this might not be one episode. If, if I find out that the mod has been divided into many parts because I managed to click on that uh, lower right corner uh, button that where it says network, I don't know if you can see it, uh, it might not be recorded by Bandicam, uh, then um, we will end up with many smaller episodes after the battle and I will upload all of them together with the, the, the long one. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you in the next episode where we will fight this battle of Suldasaras the Naga. Bye. We'll save, of course. Naga and Sindore. So I lost saved on uh, November 7th, 2022. Okay, okay thanks for watching.